Hi guys, welcome back to Prospect Channel TV. Thank you for always coming out here. May God bless you all. As a countdown to the highly anticipated 2023 general elections in testifies, pro-democracy think tanks have been brainstorming on the core issues which will shape the polls. The idea is that if election stakeholders are conversant with the dominant issues in the electoral processes, they would be able to address them by, by preferring effective remedies to mitigate effects on the elections. Center for Democracy and Development, CDD, which recently unveiled its strength, weakness, opportunities, and truth. SWOT analysis of the pools, flagged separatist agitation in the Southeast as one of the issues which would shape the presidential election. The report makes allusion to the renowned uh, agitations for separate states of Biafra, which emerged during President Buhari's time in office. The SWOT analysts document the rife fears about how the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, which has been the most vocal and active group, has been threatening to disrupt the elections unless the government calls a referendum on an independent Biafra state. According to the report, efforts to gubernatorial election in November 2021 did not succeed, but a low vote turnout was recorded, especially in local governments considered to be IPOP strongholds and election aspirants could neither campaign freely nor could INEC properly deploy for the election. Providing further context, the swapped analysts alludes to how IPOP has established an armed security wing, the Eastern Security Network, ESN, which has been at the forefront of armed conflict with Nigerian security forces. The report notes that the ESN has been accused by the Nigerian government of committing gross human rights violations across against citizens and being behind attacks on government infrastructure. More recently, the region has been taken over by sundry criminal gangs, popularly known as unknown gunmen, some of them politically sponsored, who have attempted to enforce a mandate stay at home order by attacking persons who fail to comply on their property. The, multiplic the multiplicity of non-state armed groups in further worsening security as functions compete with one another for control over violence. IPOP has three core fashions. The Simeon, Ekba led autoplot. The Chike, Chike, a dozen group known as the Directorate of State of the indigenous people of Biafra, the DOS, and MEFO, who co-founded the Biafra Defector Customary Government with the former Niger State, Niger Delta Militant, Asari Dokubo. All three continue to take a hard line that promotes violence and are increasingly isolated from the mainstream IPOB. On the effect of these agitators on the electoral processes, the Swartz analysts point out that the activities of the splinter groups have affected the registration of voters in many local governments across the Southeast and are likely to also affect the election properly. Annex Votes Registration Center were attacked in Imbo and Enugu states in July 2021. 2022, I beg your pardon, why officials were killed in Imo for attempting to support foot regi registration efforts. ANEC infrastructure has also been targeted and destroyed. Biafra separatists have proven to be particularly ad adept to 
at using radio, local radio and social media to spread hate speech and misinformation to advise their hard line separatist and gender, which they are likely to continue during the election. This would be a conducive to low vote turnout. turnout. Apart from the separatist agitation in the Southeast, Swart's report equally provided perspectives on how conflict between the farmers and herders would shape the general elections. It states that although a future of all six geopolitical zones with, a, with at least 22 out of Nigerian 36 states and the FCT affected the most serious and recurrent incidents have been reported in the states of Benue, Taraba, Plateau, Adamawa, Kaduna, Odo, and Oyo. The SWAT further observes that the conflicts are sometimes presented as clashes between Christians and Muslims or between farmers and nomadic Fulani. Such portrays have further strained social coercion in Nigeria. In response, several state governors have enacted anti open grazing laws to control. This among pastorals, which is widely assumed to trigger the conflict. The law which the law which prohibits heading livestock on foot is said to have been instrumental in reducing the number of conflicts, at least among the north central states of Benue and Taraba states. However, despite its potential for the escalating, the farmer header clashes laws such as this have become as a tangled in political discourse that priorities and promotes ethnic and religious differences. On one side, the pastorists see it as something targeting the extinction of nomadism thereby threatening their livelihood. Why, on the other side, the farmers believe that the pastoralists are receiving preferential treatment from political authorities. Okay, guys, this, uh, this analysis, this report is from um, Think Tank, pro-democracy Think Tanks, okay? So, guys, I'm dropping it here. Kindly share your thoughts.